here from Hand and Crochet and today we are making this beautiful cardigan together. Now I can't fit it all quite in the shop but I will show you different options here because what I want this cardigan to be is everything to everyone because I have sized it from newborn all the way through to 5XL adult and I've added lots of different options as well. You can add pockets, you can add a belt, you can add um, toggles, you can add a flat collar, you can add a rolled collar, you can do anything and everything you'd like to for this garment but it's really actually very easy even though we have some shaping here in at the shoulders to, to pull it in because we work the whole thing in vertical rows, that's really easy to achieve. And then we do the sleeves separately and seam them in, add the collar and you're done. It's a really lovely, rhythmical and easy make. So let's get cracking. So the yarn I chose to use for these cardigans is Brava Tweed from We Crochet. And it's a beautiful yarn that comes in these wonderful colors. And it's 100% acrylic, works up really, really nicely, blocks really nicely and is lovely to wear. So I will put down in the description all the information for the yardage you'll need for each different size, but that will also be included in the pattern. And the pattern, there is a free version available on my blog, or there is the PDF to purchase in my store. So I'll leave the links and all the information in the description below for those. To make the cardigans, you'll also need two different size crochet hooks. You'll need a five millimeter H crochet hook and a 5.5 millimeter I crochet hook or the sizes that meet the gauge for the pattern. You'll also need a pair of scissors and a needle for your ends and stitch markers. If you're a fan of stitch markers, there are a couple of places that they could be really useful. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be making the cropped small size in the adult version of the pattern together. But uh, once you get your copy of the pattern, you just need to figure out which size you're going to make. Um, and then obviously just follow along. The principles are exactly the same. We work in exactly the same way for the shaping of everything for each of the sizes. The only difference is the length. So the adult version comes in options for a cropped, um, a hip length and a duster length. And the children's version comes in a hip length one. So um, pick whichever of those you want to do, find the right part of the pattern, and then we'll get going. So the first thing we need to do is make a foundation chain for our main body. We're going to work the front and the back of the body all in one piece, just to make life easier and have less seams. So for this version, for the cropped version, for the adult size, we are going to pop a slip knot on the hook and we're going to chain 99. And I'm using the larger of the two hooks that I met the gauge with. So for me, that's a 5.5 millimeter hook. So once we've got the length of chain that we need, we're ready to work back along it to create our first row. And I always like to work in the back bump of my chain. So turn it on its side and you'll see these um, bumps across the back. They're the ones that I like to work along. And what we're going to do is in the second chain from the hook, we're going to work an extended half double crochet. So the way that we do that, if you've not worked extended stitches before, they're really simple, um, but you just have one tweak on your normal stitch. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to pop it through that back bump of that second chain. You're going to yarn over and pull through as if you were working a regular half double crochet, but rather than yarn over and pull through all three, you're going to yarn over and pull through just one. And that's the part that makes it an extended stitch and then you yarn over and you complete your stitch. So it's just slightly taller than a regular half double crochet and actually has a ni really nice texture to it. So then we need to work an extended half double crochet in the next 25. So carry on working that, yarn over and pop it through, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three. And we carry on until we've done the right amount for your size. Because remember, if you're making a different size, you'll be doing a different amount of these stitches along this foundation chain. And so this is the last extended half double crochet that we need to do. And now we're ready to work a portion of the chain as shorter stitches, because this is what's going to work um, and become our armhole shaping. So we're going to do 46 slip stitches now. So that just works in exactly the same way of using that back bump, but you just go through, yarn over, and you just pull through everything. And the important thing with these slip stitches is because they, they need to be the same length, they need to match your chains here, is just not to pull tightly at all. Give them lots of space. Just yarn over and pull through. They will 
naturally be tighter stitches. So you really need to make an effort to, maybe not that loose, Hannah. <laughs> you need to really make an effort to make them not tight. So work the amount for the size um, that you're making. And you might find that it's really fiddly here on this first row, but I promise it does get easier the more rows that we work um, and the more fabric um, you actually have in your hand. Although I do straight, I crochet very strangely, so uh, hopefully you make it look a lot easier than I do. So there we have our 46 slip stitches. And now we need to, for the remaining amount of stitches, which should match the amount at the beginning, um, is work an extended half double crochet in each of these. So back into that back bump again, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through three. And it's always a really good idea once you've finished this row just to go back and make sure that you have got exactly the right amount of each height of stitch because this is what's going to set you up for the rest of it um, and as I said if you like using stitch markers it's a good time to pop them in um, at the points where the shaping changes because then when you return to that it just gives you a little flag but because the stitches are very different obviously the half extended half double crochet has got an extra loop it is quite easy to tell um, and I've made all of mine without using stitch markers but then um, I'm not much of a fan of them so if you like using stitch markers then I would go ahead and pop some in on this row so here we are at the end of the row and we just as I said need to go and check your stitches are correct pop those stitch markers in if you'd like to and then we're ready to turn and work row two so row two is going to become a wrong side row and what we need to know now before we start is the loops of this half double crochet and what we're going to call them. So they get called differently in different by different designers in different ways and it depends whether you work in the round or in rows. But so for our purposes, what we are going to do, we're going to turn it on its end. And as we're looking at it here, we've got this V shape. And that V are the main front and back loop of the stitch. So the front loop is this one here that you can see nearest on my little finger and the back loop is here. So the back loop will always be the loop furthest away from you on the stitch. And then if you turn it to face you, you see you've got this extra loop here. So this is the extra loop, or it's sometimes known as the third loop. So in the pattern it says, whenever it tells you to work into the third loop, it will be the stitch, the, the loop of the stitch, sorry, that you see first or come to first. So we've got the third loop here first, then we have the front loop above it, and then you turn it on its end and you've got the back loop behind it. Um, and it's really important to just work out exactly where you're popping your stitches for this because this is what gives the front um, side its texture and makes the stitches stand proud. So row two begins with a chain one. And then what we're going to do, we're going to slip stitch in the front loop only of the next 10. So as we've just said, we've got the front loop is this one here because the back loop is the one furthest away from you and your third loop is this one that you come to first. So we're going to slip stitch in this front loop only here. And these 10 stitches are going to create the um, bottom rib. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work a single crochet in the third loop only of the next 16 stitches. So we have our front and our back loop here as we turn it on its end, and then we have our third loop here. So we're going to work a single crochet into that third loop only. So we have that one more. And then if you, if you ever sort of miss or go wrong on these, these third loops as we're calling them here, you just need to check because if you've got any loops showing at you like you have here on this rib section, then you've, you've missed the loop. You always need to make sure that you use the very first loop that you come to. And those stitches will take you up to where your slip stitches begin from row one. So if you're using stitch markers, you basically just keep working until you meet your stitch marker. But for those of us that like to live dangerously, 
you just wait until the, ch the shape changes. <laughs> And then what we have is the, our slip stitches. And so now we've got for this size, we've got 46 slip stitches, which is our armhole shaping. And what we're going to do, we're going to work a slip stitch into the front loop only of the next 46. So we, for our slip stitches that we worked, we don't have that extra loop. We just have a front and a back. So you are still going to work into the first loop you come to, but that first loop in this slip stitch will be the front loop. So you're just going to pop it through, yarn over and pull through. And remember to not do that too tightly at all. So 46 of those for this size in the front loop only. And there we are at the end of those slip stitches. And now we've come again to our tallest stitches that are the extended half double crochet. So they've got the three loops. And so what we're going to do is a single crochet in the third loop only of 16 for this size. And then for the last 10 stitches, we're going to work slip stitches again into the front loop only. So if you're ever unsure, turn it on its end and look for that very, very far one. That's your back loop. And so this is your front loop just there. So 10 slip stitches for the size we're making here. And that's row two complete. So now I've turned and I'm ready to work row three. And we're going to begin by chaining one. Now the chain one at the beginning of the rows, I keep really quite tight because we don't want it to add height. We just want to give ourselves room to move. And then we're going to work an extended half double crochet into the back loop only of the first 10. So that's the rib section and they're the slip stitches. So this is why we need to make sure we don't do the slip stitches too tight. Otherwise you just won't get your hook back into them. So the back loop only there, stand it on its end and pop it through the back loop that you come to. Yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through all three. And so we do 10 of those into that back loop only. And then once you've done the rib stitches, we're ready to do the main body here. And we're going to work an extended half double crochet into the full part of the stitch for the next 16. And that will take us up to the sleeve shaping. So right through the centre of that stitch and that will be, there'll be single crochets that we come across now. And there's our 16th stitch there. And then we come to the armhole shaping and we're going to work again a slip stitch into the front loop only of each. So looking at it on its end, we've got our, sorry the yarn's right over there so you can't see. Uh, we've got our front loop and our back loop and we're going to work into this front loop here. So for the size I'm making that's 46 and that's our 46 done and so we're back at the main body and we're going to work an extended half double crochet in the next 16. So you're just going to mirror what you did at the beginning of the row. And then for the bottom ribbon here, we're going to work into the back loop only. We're going to do an extended half double crochet into each of those. So for this size, it's 10. And there we are at the end of row three. And now what we need to do is repeat rows two and rows three for a certain amount of rows, for depending on which size you're making. So for the size we're making, we're going to repeat row two, row three, and row two again, and that will give us six rows. So if you go ahead and work the amount of repeats of those two rows that you need for the size you're making, and then meet you back and we will do the section two together. Righty-ho, once you've finished section one for your size, you will have this very strange looking piece of fabric that goes thin in the middle and it's thick either side. Um, and that's for our armhole shaping. So once we've completed that part, we are now ready to work a straight section, so our first straight section, and this is for the entire length of our um, piece of crochet that we need to do this. Um, and the way that we do that is this. The beginning is going to be just as we have done before and just as we know it. So we're going to chain one and you're going to work on our right side row an extended half double crochet in the back loop of 10 for the size we're doing. And that's our rib. Oh, easier said than done in that first one. 
There we go. Second one. And two. So once you've worked your back loop only rib stitches, the remaining stitches up until we meet the rib again are going to be extended half double crochets because we're not going to do any more slip stitches. We don't need any more shaping in this section now. So for the size I'm making, that's 78 extended half double crochet. Um, and if you bear with me, once we get to the slip stitches, I'll show you because there's a few options for where you want to work this first row because it says directly into the stitches but that can be a little bit tricky when it comes to slip stitches but don't worry we can figure out whichever way suits you best. Now here we are at our slip stitches and what I suggest is you go through the full slip stitch if you can to get the front and the back loop over the top there like that but that can be a bit fiddly if you do really tight slip stitches but if you've kept them nice and loose that should be okay just to wiggle your hook in if needs be. But if you find that really tricky, um, slash impossible, Hannah, <laughs> what I would suggest is that you just use either the front loop or the back loop. It won't really matter um, which you use. You're only going to be doing this once. So um, it will just add a bit more detail, another loop detail to the side of your um, sleeve cardigan armhole shaping, that's the word I'm looking for, it will add shaping to your armhole. Um, but whatever you want to do is absolutely fine here. But if you can, try and get it through the full stitch. And now here we are at the last 10, and we're going to be doing an extended half double crochet in the back loop only. And there we go. So we're ready to turn and work the next row of the straight section. So the next row of the straight section is lovely and simple and will feel very familiar because it's because it's what we did at the beginning here anyway. We're just going to carry on the whole way along the row. We're going to chain one and then pop a slip stitch in the front loop only of your rib section. So 10 for this size. And then we're ready to work our single crochet into the third loop only of every stitch up until we get to the rib on the other side here. So again, for this size, that will be 78. So that's not the third loop, Hannah, that's the, the front loop. So we go here, the very first loop that we come to, and we're gonna work a single crochet in it. So once you've worked this row, you'll know everything we need for the main set pattern, as we called it. And these rows one and row two that we've just done um, get repeated a number of times for different sizes to get the width that we need for this the first side of the cardigan. So once you've complete, completed this row, have a little look in the pattern and see how many times you need to repeat them. And then when we get here to the last 10, we're going to do our rib slip stitches into the front loop only. And there we have it, that's rows one and two of section two. And all we now need to do is pop into the pattern and check how many times you need to repeat that for your size. And work that amount of rows and then come back and we will work section three together. Okay, so now I've worked all the rows that I need to for this small size um, for section two. And now we're at section three and you'll see in the instructions it says back neckline. So what we're going to do now is work a portion of stitches but only to almost halfway. And we're going to leave this front section completely blank and we'll come back to that in a little bit. So we begin by chaining one, and you already know how to do this because it's the same set pattern that you know just for a portion of the garment instead of the whole thing. So we now need to do an extended half double crochet in the back loop of 10, because that's our rib. This is going to be the back of our cardigan here. And then once you've done those 10, you're going to do an extended half double crochet in the next 38. Regardless of what size you're making, it's 38 stitches now. And that's 38. And then we're ready to turn because that's as far as we're going to go. We're going to leave this portion to, um, to, to be the front. And we're going to turn here now and work the back still. Oh, I keep hitting everything, I'm so sorry. 
And now this row, you're going to know what to do because it's just a wrong-sided row that we've already been doing. But instead of working a rib here at the start, we're going to go straight into the pattern. So we need to chain one, and then we're going to single crochet into that third loop only. And then we're going to do that for each stitch up until we get to the bottom rib. So it'd be 38 stitches and then the 10 stitches left for the bottom rib. And now here we are at the last 10 and we're going to slip stitch in the front loop only of each of these. And that's that second row of the back portion complete. So these two rows that we've just done create the main set pattern for the back panel now. And so all you need to do is check in the pattern how many rows you need to do for the size you're making, and then go ahead and make your back panel. Um, for the size I'm making here, I need to do up until row 23. So I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you back here, and we will do the other side of the cardigan together. So we have now finished this back portion, the back neckline, and we now need to make the other second straight section, we've called it in the pattern, and it needs to match this front section that we have here. So we now need to make a nice long chain that will then match here, and then we'll be able to work in nice big long rows for the 98 stitches of the whole of the cardigan now. So if you refer to the pattern, it might be a different number for the size you're making, so just check out and look out for that. But so I'm going to chain 51. So now we have this long chain attached to the main body of our cardigan and we need to work the uh, main set pattern now to create the other front of it um, all in one panel. As we go, I've, I've explained that terribly, but as we go, it will make more sense. So to begin with, we're going to slip stitch into the back, back bump of the second chain from the hook and then the next nine. So that will create the 10 stitches for the bottom rib that we need. And that's 10. And then we're going to work a single crochet into each of the stitches, each of the chains, up until we meet the stitches of the back that we did. And now here we are arriving at that back section. And now what we need to do is start working in the third loops again, because we've got these full stitches now to work into. And so you're going to do a single crochet into the third loop of all the stitches until the last 10. So this is the wrong side, it's exactly the same as we've been doing up until this point. And here we are at the last 10, and we're going to do our slip stitches in the front loop only. And that's the first row of this section complete. And so we turn and we're going to start the next row. The next row of section four is going to be a nice familiar one because it's basically what we did on the other side on every other right side row. We're going to chain one, we're going to do an extended half double crochet in the back loop of 10 for our rib. Then we'll work an extended half double crochet into the main stitch up until the last 10. And here we are at the last 10 and it's going to be an extended half double crochet in the back loop only. For the remaining part of section four, what we now need to do is work these two rows in sequence, but um, your, your next row won't obviously start by working into a chain. So you're going to chain one, and then you're going to do as you did in the first straight section, a slip stitch, sorry, into the front loop only of the first 10, and then you'll do a single crochet in the third loop of all the main stitches, and then you'll do your rib slip stitches again on this side. And then your right side rows will all be exactly the same as we've just worked there with the extended half double crochets. And so in the pattern, it will tell you how many rows you need to work of that. So for this size, I'm working up until row 10. So I'll go ahead and work those 10 rows, and then I will meet you back here and we get to do the second armhole shaping and that is our body complete. So once you have completed section four, we are ready to do the fifth and final section of this main body. 
So we will turn, and the only difference we have now, we're going to continue working in the main set pattern, but we are now going to add the armhole shaping again, as we did at the very beginning for the first armhole. So for this size, it's going to be 46 stitches in the middle that we do the slip stitches for, uh, but do check in the pattern to see what, what number of stitches you'll need to do for your size. So we're on a wrong side row here. So we're going to, as we always do, chain one and work our slip stitches in the front loop only for the first 10. And then we're going to single crochet in the third loop only of 16. And then that takes us up to where we now start our 46 stitches of the armhole shaping. And they're going to be slip stitches into the front loop only. So just into that one there. And now remember, just as before on the other side, try and make sure they're not too tight, give them lots of space. And then when you've completed those slip stitches, we're ready to do our single crochet in the third loop of 16 again. And then we finish off the final turn with a slip stitch in the front loop only. So you see it's exactly as we've done before in the straight sections, but just with those slip stitches in the middle. And so that's the first row of the sleeve shaping done. And we turn, and we're going to chain one, and I think you probably guessed what we're doing here at the beginning. We're going to extended half double crochet in the back loop of the first 10. Then we need an extended half double crochet in the full stitch for 16. And that will then bring us to our slip stitches. And so you're going to pop a slip stitch in the front loop only of the 46 for your armhole shaping. And then once you've done those, you are then back to repeating the extended half double crochet into the full stitch for 16 or to the last 10. And then the last 10, you do your rib again, and it's the extended half double crochet in the back loop only. And then that will complete the second row of this final section. And then all we need to do is repeat those two rows for as many times as it tells you in the pattern. For the size that we're making here, we're going to do that up, till, up until row six. So go ahead, finish this row, and then work the amount of repeats of the, these two rows that it tells you in the pattern to do. And you will have completed the front and the back of your cardigan. And then we are ready to, depending on how which order you want to do it in, either make the sleeves or add the collar, whichever you prefer. I'm going to add the collar first, and then we'll make the sleeves and pop those on afterwards. So once you have made the main body of the cardigan, we are ready to add the collar on. And you can see I've already added the collar and the toggles onto this one, but I wanted to talk through the two different options that we have. So this one is the flat collar, and this it's, it's just um, a single layer, and it's worked uh, back and forth. Both options for the collar are worked back and forth in rows, and they attach to the main body along the stitches here. And we work all the way up, one side and we carry on round until we get to the middle here and then the other side we're going to work from the bottom upwards again just so your stitches are all facing exactly the same direction all the way up and then we finish here and then we just seam these stitches here at the very center of the back of the neck so this option gives you either option gives you the stitch facing the right side and it matches the rib down here at the bottom the other option is to have a rolled collar, and this rolled collar looks like this. It's secured and sewn down, but you have the right side, so it's like doubled over basically. Um, and then at the top here, you have this lovely thick deep collar that goes over like a really, yeah, a rolled collar basically. Um, and I have sewn um, these, this side shut, so it makes it nice um, and thick and cozy. The difference being here, if you're doing a rolled collar, you need your right side to face on 
the wrong side here. So the, on the inside of your cardigan, because we're going to turn it in on itself, we need to have the right side facing here. So for the flat collar, we have the right side facing the right side all the way to begin with. But for the rolled collar, we need to have the, um, the right side facing on the inside so we can turn it over and um, it's facing the right way. Now, the thing, the thing, we work it exactly the same way, but this rolled one is slightly longer. But the difference is we need to start slightly differently at the bottoms to make sure that they're facing the right direction. So make sure you go and look at the um, instructions in the pattern for that. And depending on which style you choose, I'm going to work the rolled collar here for the version that I'm making. Uh, but the flat collar is actually simpler than this. So if you want to go with the flat collar, then just pop into the pattern and check how to go about that. So now with the main body complete and we're ready to pop the collar on, you'll see you have this kind of U shape here and these are the two fronts of the cardigan. And what we're going to do, as I say, is work the collar in this space here um, and meet up at the middle and join it. So the magic is um, to work out which way it needs to be facing. We need the wrong side of our collar for the rolled one to be facing this side. So this is our right side of our cardigan and we need the wrong side of the collar facing us. If you're doing the um, flat collar, then you'll need to have the right side facing you. Um, my best advice is if this completely muddles you up and you're not quite sure which way, have a start, have a go um, and you'll see really quickly whether your right side or your wrong side is facing you. So have a go. It doesn't matter if it goes wrong because you know what? You can undo it and you can start again. That's the wonderful thing about crochet. Uh, but even I got a bit confuddled when I was working out which way um, I need to join and where I need to join. So let's get making this collar. Okay, so we're going to start by working this side of the collar here. So as you wear it, that will be the left side of your cardigan. And for the rolled collar, we are going to join at this first stitch with the right side facing us. If you are working the flat collar, you will need to join slightly differently because you'll need it to face the other way. And what we are going to do is we are going to chain 25. And what I should have already said, and I do apologize, is that I'm now using my smaller hook. I'm now using my H hook for this um, because I find that it gives you a much neater and tighter rib. Um, but go with what feels comfortable for you. Um, and I would say if you have had to change the size of your hook to meet the gauge, then all you need to do is go down a half size of a hook um, to work the rib or don't change at all, whichever you prefer. So then once you've done that chain, and this is another point that you can you can really customize. If you want your collar to be deeper or shorter, then just work more or less chains here. It's really entirely up to you how you want to customize this part. And then what we're going to do is working into the back bumps in the second chain from the hook, we're going to work an extended half double crochet there. And then we're going to do an extended half double crochet in each stitch up until you meet the main body. And there we are into that last chain. And so now we can see that we've got the wrong side to join into. And all we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches of this main body. And we're going to work all the way up this main body. So that's one and that's two. And now we're ready to turn over and now we're going to work back into those 24 stitches. So now we've got the wrong side facing us and our wrong side rows are always going to be, whether you're working the flat or the rolled collar, your wrong side rows are going to be a slip stitch into the front loop only. But what we don't need to do is do anything into these two um, slip stitches that we used here. We only need to work it into the 24 stitches or less if you're doing the flat collar that we have here. So it's easy to get caught out by that. So make sure you don't use those and then go into the front loop only of the stitches of your collar. And there we are at the last stitch and we're going to be ready. Sorry, it's such a funny angle there. We're going to be ready to turn and now we're going to work another row of extended half double crochet 
in the back loop only this time all the way up until we meet the main body again and already you can see that this is definitely going to be in the right direction for this because the rolled collar is going to turn back on itself and sit nicely like this so we have our right side here and we will end up with our right side of the ribbing facing so if you've got to this point and yours is facing the other direction you're going to need to figure out and flip it around uh, but if you're working your flat collar then your right side should always be on the right side um, when, it's, when it's there so on your flat version this will be the right side so we're now going to chain one and then we're going to work an extended half double crochet into the back loop only of each of these stitches, just like we did for the ribbing at the bottom of the, the main body. And there we are at the last stitch and we're now going to slip stitch into the next two, working up the main body. And then we turn and you're ready to carry on. So we just repeat those two rows um, all the way. If you're doing the flat collar, you repeat, obviously facing the opposite direction, you will repeat all the way up until the midpoint, if I can find it, all the way up and around. And then when you work into the, um, the sides of the rows, you just do a slip stitch into each side of a row counts as um, one place for a slip stitch all the way to the center of your back. And then we'll repeat the process. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Repeat the process on the other side. But for the rolled collar, you'll notice in the pattern that I suggest doing some increases just to make it lay a bit nicer and neater. You don't have to do the increases if you don't want to, if you just want it to go straight around. But if you do want to do that, then my suggestion is that we work up until the point of where the armhole shaping is as we are now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repeat that all the way up here to the armhole shaping and then we'll do some increasing together um, that takes us not very much don't worry about it all the way up and around to meet in the center so if that's what you'd like to do you'd like to do the increasing then work your way up until your armhole shaping whatever that may be for the length that you're making um, and then meet me back here and we'll do the increases together so here we are level i've worked um, up until the armhole shaping here and we are ready now to do a bit of an increase row, not a bit of an increase row, an increase row. Um, and we're going to do that from this end here. So with the right side of our um, rib facing us, we're going to chain one. And then for the first stitch here, the only difference for the entire row is that we're going to work two extended half double crochets into the back loop of that first one instead of the normal one that we would do and then the rest of the row remains exactly the same so we're now going to uh, work an extended half double crochet in the back loop only of each stitch across up until we meet the um, main body and you'll join in exactly the same way with a slip stitch in the next two stitches so this will increase your collar stitch count by one and for the next portion of the collar, check in the pattern for how many rows it now tells you to work with this amount of stitches. And there will, depending again on what size you make, will be probably one more increase like this. So on this, this side of your work, you'll increase again um, um, and have a higher stitch count. And then that will be the amount that you carry on and work until the center of the collar. So work away on this collar, meet you back here when you get to the middle center at the back. Right, so once we've finished this first side of our rolled version of the collar, you can just flip it over. I've popped a stitch marker in there to find the center of the back there. You can flip it over to see how it's kind of going to look. And then we just need to match that, as you'll see in the pattern, along this other side. But the difference here is that we rather than joining to the first stitch and then working the way that we did on this side we're going to need to create a chain first off so however long you made your collar on this side create a chain of the same length and then we're going to attach to here okay so once we've got the chain ready we are just going to attach to this first stitch here this is i've got my right side facing me for this rolled collar and you're just going to join with a slip stitch there 
and then you're going to flip your chain over because we're going to want to work back along it from the first chain from the hook you can use this time and you need to work an extended half double crochet into each of them along and that will give you the same amount of stitches that you have on the opposite side of the collar. The rest of the collar is fairly similar in that you increase in exactly the same places. You work up until that armhole shaping as you did on the other side, but what you'll find is that your increases will need to be at the end of the row rather than at the beginning of the row. Because as you'll see when we get to the end of here, we are on extended half double crochets. And if we were increasing the row, what we would do is just pop two in the last stitch and that will increase your count by one. So if you do that on your increase rows rather than increasing at the beginning, everything will be um, nice and even and your collar will turn out perfectly. So if you go ahead and finish this side of the collar now, following the instructions in the pattern, and then meet me back here when you've completed and got to the center back of the neck, and we'll join that seam, and then we'll be ready after a quick block to seam, set the sleeves in, and seam the sides. Okay, so here I am having finished my collar. I've met in the middle, so I've got one edge of my collar here and one edge of my collar here. And you will have a very strange looking garment at the moment. But what we are going to need to do, however long or wide you've decided to make your collar, we are going to need to connect the two together. So both sides of the collars will join at this center back point here. And the, the way we can do that, we can, you can sew it if you like, but I much prefer to crochet seams that have got stitches here. So all we're going to do is use a slip stitch seam and you can decide which loops yourself to go through. It really doesn't matter here at the centre back because there's so many loops and bits and pieces. You just need to do stitch for stitch and line it up nice and level and then join all the way to the end of this row. Now here we are at the end of that seam and I do just give an extra one at the end there just to make sure because otherwise you might have just a teeny little gap where your collar joins the main body. Um, and then you're ready to break your yarn and then we can weave that in as part of the weaving in process. But that is the back of your collar joined. And if we flip it around, which is a lot easier said than done, you are going to see that this becomes your collar. So our sides aren't seamed yet, so it looks all sorts of strange, but this is going to lay over this way and become your collar. So I would suggest the next step would be to block this completely flat. So open it out and block it flat um, and have your sleeves blocked as well. And then we will set the sleeves in and we will join under the arms. And then I would also suggest if you've done a rolled collar that we're going to sew a little bit of it to attach it here because otherwise it will flap about quite a lot. It's the top that you want the drama of the rolled um, and not the bottom. So um, go ahead and get your pieces blocked and then meet me back and we'll pop the sleeves on. So now we are ready to work some sleeves to attach to our cardigan, unless you're obviously making the sleeveless version, in which case you can skip ahead to all the seaming bits. But I wanted to show you, I've done two different versions of cuff for the sleeves, depending on what kind of fit you would like. So, so in the pictures of the duster length one, which is the one I have here, you'll see that the cuff um, is nice and loose on me. And I've done that because the whole thing is quite oversized on me anyway, and I wanted that kind of style and fit. And the difference here, is that we will be using um, um, alternate rows of single crochet and then slip stitches to form the cuff here. So if you'd like that looser fit, then make sure you check in the pattern just for which way round you need to get those stitches. But for this crop version and then for all the child sizes, I've actually used slip stitch in the front loop only for all of the rows of the rib. It gives a lovely, lovely good stretch, but it is um, a tighter fit um, than the others. The remaining sleeve is exactly the same. So you have nice volume to your sleeve and then just a slimmer fit of your cuff. So if you're worried that your cuff won't fit or you have issues with, um, with cuffs being a little tight anyway, or you don't enjoy them being tight, then 
I would go for the looser version here. But if you want them cinched in at the wrists, then go for the one that we're going to work together for the crop. To make the sleeves, what we need to do to begin with for these adult sizes is we need to chain 61. Now for the children's sizes, they are all um, different lengths of chain, so check in the pattern. And then the other thing to say is if you would like to change your the sleeve length, then you can absolutely do that by changing your starting chain. So what I would recommend is if you have particularly long or particularly shorter arms, try your main body on, just pin it together at the sides and then measure from where obviously your the, the side of your garment finishes up until the, the, your wrist or wherever you would like your sleeve to go and then work a chain of approximately that length uh, because it doesn't actually matter how many stitches, there's no stitch pattern as such to worry about here. So once you've got the length of chain that you would like for your sleeves, we're going to work into the second chain from the hook. We're going to pop, this is the thinner um, cuff that we're working here. We're going to pop a slip stitch into there and then we're going to do a slip stitch into the next 19. So that's going to give us a cuff of 20 stitches for this adult size here. But you can absolutely change that if you want to. This is as uh, you can do as many or as few stitches for the cuff as you like. The other thing to say then, if you are wanting to use the wider version of the cuff on this side of the row, on this side, which is going to be the right side of your work, you're going to need to work these as single crochet, so not slip stitches here. If you want the wider one, you'll do single crochet stitches. So then once you've got the stitches set for your cuff, we're now going to work an extended half double crochet in the next chain along and each of the chains up until the end of your sleeve. Here we are approaching the end of our foundation chain. And then once you've um, finished that row, we turn and now we're on a wrong side row. So just as we did with the main body, we're going to chain one and then we're going to work the single crochet into that third loop of each stitch up until you get to your cuff stitches, which in this is really easy to see because it then drops down to being a slip stitch. But again, if you're um, a fan of stitch markers, then pop a stitch marker in just so that you know when to change when you get to it. Now here we are coming up to the cuff. And so in the 20 stitches that we have here, we're going to pop a slip stitch into the front loop only of each. And this row is the same whether you're working the looser cuff or the tighter cuff. And so that is row two complete. And we turn and row three will feel very familiar. We're going to chain one, making sure that chain one is quite nice and tight. And then we will slip stitch into, I nearly went to the back loop there, that's not right. <laughs> slip stitch into the front loop. We're always using the front loops in this um, rib here. So 20 of those, or however long you've chosen your cuff to be. And then we get to the main body of the sleeve and we're going to pop an extended half double crochet into each stitch until the end now. And that will be the right sided row that you work for the whole of the sleeves. And the wrong sided row is row two that we've just done. So this is row three. Row four will be a repeat of row two. And then you'll see in the instructions in the pattern, it tells you to repeat rows three and rows four for a set amount of time. Um, and that will give you your armhole depth uh, because the, what we are doing, the stitches are going to become the width of your sleeve, so the um, your armhole depth basically, and this direction is the length of your sleeve. So it's done slightly different, um, differently than lots of other sleeves are done. So what you can do is, if you want um, a fuller sleeve, you can work more rows, or if you want it tighter, you can work less rows. But just bear in mind that you have already set your armhole um, depth by you doing the shaping on the main body. So you will have to then, if you do less rows, you will have to then stretch your sleeve um, to fit that armhole depth. Um, or similarly, you'll have to um, bunch it all in to um, get it, but actually 
both of those options actually look quite nice because you'll end up with a, if you've got a bigger sleeve, you'll end up with like a ruffled sleeve cap and that will look really, really nice. Or if it's slightly tighter, it will then just be slimmer fitting over the top of your arm. So um, do feel free to mess around and play around. I know lots of lots of designers get a bit, um, bit shirty when people change their patterns around, but I really love it because I want this and every pattern that you make from any of mine to be perfect for you and just because I've designed it in this certain way doesn't mean that you can't switch it around and change things to suit your style or your body type you know do whatever brings you joy and do whatever you're going to love to wear so go for it check in the pattern how many rows you need to do work up this sleeve work up your second sleeve and then we'll be ready to um, work our bits and bobs and seam it all together Okay then, so to set the sleeves in, we have got the wrong side of a sleeve up here and we have got the armhole shaping here, which I know looks like it doesn't fit, but I promise you it does. Once everything's blocked to measurements, which this it now is, it now fits. But the first thing I would suggest that you do is you um, pop stitch markers in at the either ends and then one in the middle because it's very easy to go awry with the lining up of sleeves I find. I'm very good at thinking I'm doing really well and then I get um, halfway and I've got nowhere near the right amount. So about halfway of the sleeve. I'm very rough guesstimate with things like this but it generally works out. I have been known to have to undo certain things <laughs> but that's absolutely fine. Let's see there we are nice and level. And what I'm going to suggest we do here because we've got ends of rows for the sleeves here and we've got stitches here. Now you can, you can crochet these together if you want to but I find it gives a much neater finish if you sew them together when you've got a mixture of row ends and stitches. If it's got stitches and stitches then um, crocheting those together looks really lovely and I don't have a problem at all with doing that but I'm going to show you today about sewing them together. Um, and I basically just run my way along. I'm going to go through the whole of the stitch on this side. But if you wanted to give more detailing, you could go through um, just one loop and not the other. It's entirely up to you. But to give a nice secure finish, I'm going to go through the whole of the stitch there. Um, and just work your way along. If you have a different seaming method that you prefer, then absolutely go for it. Do what you feel most comfortable with and that you're most used to because unless, unless you really want to experiment with seaming, what you know and what you're used to will be the most successful. And then once we get to the very end here, I would recommend not weaving in this end yet. Now I know that might be controversial, but I have had bad experiences in the past. I'm just gonna snip it a little bit shorter. Bad experiences in the past of weaving in the ends at this point and then trying it on and realizing, no, I wanna make changes. So if, um, if you're cautious like me, then leave that end, leave all of your ends until the very, very end once you've tried it on and you're absolutely certain that you're happy with it. So go ahead, set the other sleeve in on the other side in exactly the same way with the wrong side facing you in your preferred seaming method. So then, if you have chosen to make the rolled collar, I'm just going to show you where I attach it to. Now, I haven't seamed the sides and under the sleeves yet. Now, you can if you want to. You can do that first and then do this, but I find it easier to do this collar part flat. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use a couple of stitch markers just to attach here down at the bottom because uh, it's very easy for this to get out of sync if you're not careful. And I'm going to attach it. This is the right side looking up at me now to that very first row there. Then just work up, work out where um, your rows match up. So we've got two, three, four. Let's just pop one in there. And it will just help guide you when you're sewing it. So you can't see that very well. That will just help guide you when you're sewing it. So pop in some stitch markers to run all the way up. And I would recommend sewing it, or seeing, you can do it as far as you like actually, but to where you do your first 
um, increase. So for me, I believe that's here. So I would say up until this point, but you can do it as, as much or as little as you like. I just find it helps the collar sit much neater. So pop some stitch markers in and then we'll sew it together. Okay, so I'm going to take a small length of yarn on my needle and I'm going to go through the back here and come up and I'm going to just catch as little as I possibly can of these front stitches in. So you can see the shape of the stitches, you can actually run through the middle of them and it won't show terribly. And then just go up and into there. So just make sure you catch it at the right point. And then I'm going to run up. You see this exactly where the collar joins here. And I will pull the yarn through and then we'll be ready to do the second row. So just make sure as with all of the seams, everything lines up and matches exactly as it should. And so I'm coming up into the second row here and down and then scooping up through the back there. So just take your time with this. It's really, really worth the effort um, just to go steady and slow and get it really nice and neatly lined up. So just work all the way up, up until you get to that top stitch mark or wherever you're happy for it to be. And then you can weave in the ends. Okay, so once your sleeves are all set in, the last job of the of the seaming part here that we need to do is to go all the way. I've folded the sleeve over in half with this wrong side facing me so that the seam will be on the inside. And I need to work all the way along the bottom of the sleeve and then it's already attached to the body so then I can just continue and to work down the body. Now obviously mine's really short because it's the crop version but if you're making the hip or the duster length you'll have a long way to go down your body and so I left a really long tail at the end of my sleeve that I can use for this and I will start at the cuff here and I want to show you just two quick options because you have got stitches matching stitches all the way along here now so if you wanted to a crochet seam would look really good here so you basically just match up stitch for stitch and you can work a slip stitch seam all the way along. The only thing with this is you do just have to be really careful you don't pull these slip stitches too tight because it will pull and pucker your seam. But it's a really nice, easy, uh, mindful way of seaming things and it doesn't take very long at all once you get into the swing of it. So that is one way of doing it. The other option, of course, is to sew it, just like I did when I set the sleeves in, is that this time you are going in stitches and stitches, so actually it's a lot easier. You can, you can just run back and forth and you can line up each of the stitches, but I would just make sure when you get to the end of the cuff, make sure that that's all lined up. When you get to the underarm, make sure that's all lined up uh, because otherwise it's very easy to get just a couple of stitches out everywhere. And then by the time you get to the end, you haven't got quite the right amount, right amount that you need. So just do keep checking that you're all lined up and you haven't missed any stitches, but seam all the way along here up to the armhole and then all the way down the side. So one of the optional extras that I've added into the pattern are these pockets. Now you can barely see them and that's a good thing, hey? Um, because they are basically just a match of the pattern that we are using and then we um, patch them, or they're called patch pockets because we then literally just sew them onto the front of the cardigan at whichever position you would like them to be. So let's do a quick whip through. You already know how to do this stitch, so we'll just do a short example. And the good thing about this is whichever size you're making, you can do as many rows or as many stitches as you like. You can make the pockets as big or as wide, as deep, however you would like them to be. And I would recommend making them after you've made your garment and after you've actually seamed it all and put it all together, because then you can measure exactly where you'd like them to be and how big you would like them to be and you can actually just count when you before you make them you can count okay well it needs to be this many stitches long and this many rows across so let's make a quick sample of those and then I'll show you how we attach them so as I've described in the pattern for the pockets, um, you can make them as, as deep and as wide as you like, depending on obviously what size you're making and how much space you've got um, to put them in. So this is the main principle. And so you can jiggle them around and work them out um, to be how you'd like them. We create a foundation chain. 
and then working back into that, the second loop from the hook and along, we're going to work an extended half double crochet in each stitch along. Okay, so once you've got a stitch in each of your stitches, we're going to turn and our wrong sided row is going to begin with a chain one and then we're going to single crochet into that third loop and you're going to do that for as many stitches as you would like until you want to create the top rib of the pocket. So in the example that I did for the duster length, I suggested that you work until the last eight stitches, but um, that then obviously gives you quite a deep, if I was doing it on this little example, which would be a good size, I think for a child's pocket, then you would have a massive rib and not much pocket. So I will just leave it until these last few stitches here. And then what we'll do is a slip stitch in the front loop only of each of those. And then we can turn. And then we're going to work a chain one and then an extended half double crochet in the back loop only. So you'll see you're just working the same rib as you did before. You know all of these stitches now. Extended half double crochet in the back loop only of each of those stitches that you've decided to have as the, the top trim of your pocket. And then we're ready to launch into our main stitch pattern of an extended half double crochet in the actual stitch here. So into all of these single crochets, we're going to do an extended half double crochet. And then those two rows that we've just worked there, rows two and rows three, they become the repeat. And so you can just repeat those for as many rows as you would like, and that will then dictate the width of your pocket. So once you're happy with the amount of repeats that you've worked for your pocket, what I would do is break the yarn, but give yourself a really, really good length of tail because you can then use that tail to sew your pockets onto your cardigan. So now on my duster version, I'm just showing you quickly how to attach these pockets. So I have started, I pinned it to begin with um, to make sure that it lined up with the stitches um, and the rows that we have here. And then I just sewed it um, stitch for stitch all the way around down across the bottom, sorry you can't see, and then all the way up to here. And so now I'm meeting back here and all I basically do is just find the next stitch along and we pop it through the next stitch along in the actual main body. And then it's always good to give it a tug so you know where you are, next stitch and next stitch. And the good thing about this yarn is it's very forgiving. And so if, if you don't quite get through the whole thing, it won't really show, but it is really important, obviously, to make sure that it is very well lined up because then it will look very, very wonky um, if your stitches are out of line. So then just sew, weave in this end and secure your entire pocket and pop the other one on the other side. What I would say and what I did was pin them first, put your cardigan on and then see how it looks, see if you're happy with it before you spend time sewing them on because they are a fair way around when you're doing the duster version. Make sure that they're well aligned and that you're happy with how they're sitting before you sew them in place. So the other optional thing that I created, especially for the duster length, was this tie. And so obviously you by now you can probably realise that you can make these things as long or as short as you like. But I have in the pattern given you options and ideas of, of each different length, how, how many stitches and rows you ought to do. Um, and it's really simple. You already know how to do it. But let's have a little section of it now to work together. So once you've got the chain, that you would length of chain that you would like for your belt. So for this example, I use 201 chains here. Our first row is going to be working back into the back bump. So the second chain from the hook, we're going to do an extended half double crochet in each stitch along. Um, and this will seem really familiar because we're basically just doing the rib that we used um, all around. So on the collar and at the base of the cardigan. And then at the end of that first row, we turn, and this is our wrong sided row. So we're going to chain one and we're going to slip stitch into the front loop only of each across. 
and then we turn and you're going to chain one and then extended half double crochet in the back loop only of each. And if you like, that could be it. This could be the width of your belt. Uh, but what I've done, as you can probably see above there on the mustard colour one, I've just repeated rows two and three again. So it's five rows for, for this depth of belt, but you could just do a thinner. I was going to say, if you're going to do it for um, any of the child sizes, I would just do these three rows. And that's all there is to the belt. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I've really enjoyed going through this cardigan and all the various different options with you. Do come and let me know what you make, whether you do the child size, the adult size, whether you put the rolled, the flat collar, what kind of cuffs you use. Um, I love seeing them all. And as you can see, I've already made lots of my own for my whole family and um, they all like different, different styles. So I asked my children what they would prefer and they told me, and it was amazing that I could do what they would love. So come and tell me what you make for you and for your families and your friends because I would love to see them. See you again soon.